Today is a pivotal moment in the Third Lebanon War, day 13. Let's start with what happened today and shape a picture of exactly what's going down. The IDF attacked Beirut in the morning with targeted airstrikes. Hezbollah is melting. The attack was in the neighborhood of the Daya district, the same place where Hassan Nasrallah, the former leader of Hezbollah, was killed. The Lebanese Ministry of Health has reported that 105 people were killed and 359 people were injured in the IDF bombings on Lebanon yesterday. Today, new number is 89 from today's bombings. This is likely a huge underestimate and they are basically just guessing at this point based on how many people they think are in areas versus how many people have escaped, etc. It's getting a lot harder to guess as the airstrikes have been so widespread. Lebanese media is reporting that Israel is preventing the landing of Iraqi and Iranian planes. Basically, there has been an air blockade on Lebanon for a while already, for a few days now, and no planes can land unless Israel allows it, and Israel currently does not allow it, and therefore the Lebanese Ministry of Transportation is actually sending back these planes and saying, turn around, you cannot land here. Another drone was shot down over the Red Sea. Israel is becoming much better at shooting down these suicide drones. In the beginning of the war, there was a less than 50% shoot down rate, but now it's way higher. So good job in Israel. They are finally plugging up this massive glaring hole. It's the one trump card that Hezbollah still held but Israel has figured out a way to fix it. The Wall Street Journal has reported that Israeli forces are launching raids into southern Lebanon, including entering Hezbollah terror tunnels located near the border. So over the next few hours, there have been many reports, there will be many reports of invasions and this and that, and now it gets confusing because the big misinformation, disinformation campaign by Israel and yes, a little bit by Lebanon in order to try to trick Hezbollah into not knowing when this attack will happen because the Americans have already spilled the beans that this attack is taking place and now the Israelis are going to play coy. It will be unclear exactly when Israel will invade, specifically because Hezbollah will try to do a massive attack on Israeli cities, rocket attack, missile attack, drone attack, etc. onto Israeli cities in order to try to fight but if Israel doesn't allow them to understand exactly when they're going in and it just happens then Hezbollah won't be able to get off that huge shot that huge attack that they are planning very important a lot of misinformation but it's on purpose the United Arab Emirates president has pledged 100 million dollars in aid to Lebanon Lebanon right now is about to get hit by something that it has never experienced before, not even in 2006. Alarms are sounding in the Golan area. Lots of attacks on Israel. Explosions are heard in the Syrian capital of Damascus. That's correct. Israel is also attacking Syria. A short-range ballistic missile was fired by Hezbollah at Haifa. It landed in an open area with no damage or injuries reported. Hezbollah firepower right now is currently very weak and with probably saving the rest of their good attacks for when Israel actually invades. Now it gets a little bit more interesting. al Mayadeen, Hezbollah officiated media organization, reports of unusual movements by the Israeli military. U.S. officials say that Israel is preparing to conduct a limited ground invasion of southern Lebanon with its goal to bring the destruction of Hezbollah military infrastructure along the southern border. United States government officials have just leaked the Israeli invasion plans just leaked everything. Israel is very, very angry about this. All senior leaders of Hezbollah's rocket and missile force have been eliminated today, with the final nail in the coffin being Eid Hassan Nashar, the commander of the medium range rocket force. Now, all commanders of the rocket force are dead. Goodbye. The German embassy in Beirut has announced the evacuation of non essential staff and families of their German embassy in Beirut. Obviously, they assume the war possibly will actually happen also in Beirut, so lots of countries are starting to evacuate. Syrian authorities have reported that since the beginning of this war, 13 days ago, 
over 100,000 Lebanese nationals have crossed into Syria fleeing the inevitable conflict. Now, I if we can get a little bit. Wow, that's a lot of information. Many of the remaining Hezbollah commanders have fled to Syria through tunnels, according to reports. It's unclear if exactly it's true, but you know, whatever. We cannot confirm any of this, but uh, that's basically how it works. There are red alerts in northern Israel, Naharia, Ben Ami, Rosh Hanikra, and Shlomi. Alerts around the Sea of Galilee, Mala and Gamla, and Hadanes. So you know, Hezbollah is trying to attack, but so far it's not having any success. The United States has over 25 warships in the Middle East. Yeah, 25, including two aircraft carriers, and I'm getting a third one. The Shin Bet has detected a significant rise in assassination attacks against Israel, against targets in Israel over the past few weeks by Iran. Let me write that down. By Iran. That's a very key, important piece of information. Okay, the Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, put out a two minute, Benjamin Netanyahu put out a two minute video to the Iranian people in English. I speak a lot about the leaders of Iran, yet at this pivotal moment I want to address you, the people of Iran. I want to do so directly without filters, without middlemen. He spoke about the subjugation of the Iranian people by the regime and ended that Iran will thrive like never before. The new leader of Hezbollah, Deputy Secretary General Naim Qasem, is sweating and sweating buckets as he gives his first speech in the, the deepest of deepest bunkers that currently exist, threatening that he will respond, Hezbollah will respond to the, the Zionists, but let's face it, that dude is sweating buckets for more than just there's no ventilation in the, in the bunker. He's scared that he's next, and he is. Yoav Galan, Defense Minister of Israel, quote, the next stage of the war against Hezbollah will begin soon. Washington Post says the incursion can happen immediately. Biden, I would be comfortable if military operations between Israel and Hezbollah are stopped. Really? Massive wave of airstrikes have been targeted on southern Lebanon. Israel now is softening the target, getting ready to go in. The United States is sending thousands of additional troops to the Middle East. They already have over 40,000, possibly in 50, 60,000 because of all the extra ships that are bringing more and more sailors. So a, lot, a huge army in the Middle East and America is sending even more. Air France has suspended flights to Tel Aviv and Beirut until October 8th. The IDF, an IDF drone hit the Al Amra Al Wazani checkpoint and killed a soldier riding on a motorcycle. Lots of things have been happening today. More, ri more rockets on Haifa, lots of interceptions. 10 total rockets were fired, no reports of injuries. Netanyahu had a meeting with the Security Council. That is over, and for the past, like, six hours, they've been in discussions of exactly what the plans are with the military leaders about to go in to Lebanon. Logistical trucks and reservists have been seen gathering at assembly points across northern Israel, according to the New York Times. The United Kingdom has urged citizens to leave Lebanon immediately. According to Channel 14, Israel and the USA and Saudi Arabia, and among other regional partners, are preparing for a massive Iranian attack on Israel with the defense being prepared, a massive defense for the third time. The first time was in April, the second time was, I think, in June, if I'm not mistaken, and then nothing came of that. And now it's for the third time. They are assuming that if Israel actually goes into Lebanon, which they are doing presently, uh, that uh, Iran might go and try to attack Israel in order to try to get them to maybe pull out of Lebanon or stop or something like that. The IDF has imposed a closed military zone in Metula Misgav Am and Kfar Giladi. It's completely Metula Misgav Am and Kfar Giladi. It's just a closed military zone. And uh, nonstop artillery shelling has started taking place from that closed military zone onto Lebanon. As I said, massive artillery shelling by the IDF across Lebanon has been fired, across the border, has been fired into Lebanon, taking out or softening the targets. So a lot of softening the targets tonight. CNN satellite photos show almost 100 Israeli military vehicles gathered near the Lebanon border. So this is where I'm going to stop because right now there's reports that Israeli troops are actually going in. And so we won't actually know. There's a complete media blackout 
by Israel, and all the reports are coming from foreign media. And, uh, well, a lot of it is inaccurate, a lot of it is speculation, and so these videos about what happened will be done many hours after they actually took place. It's not going to be live like this. We're talking about real time, right now, massive strikes on Beirut, massive strikes on Lebanon, massive shelling by artillery. The Lebanese military has backed away from the border. That's the thing that's currently happening. The Lebanese army, not Hezbollah, has backed away. UNFIL, the United Nations interim force in Lebanon, they've backed away. So it's going to happen today or the next few days, very, very soon. Invasion is happening. That is day 13, and I'll see you tomorrow for day 14.